Welcome to Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game playthrough. Uh, I'm Sherwin, lead designer of the project. Uh, the, with me today is Jamie and Gaz, and we'll be playing through the game. So, to begin with, we're going to choose our tracking deck. Now, when we play through the game, we have various different quarries that we can go with, which represent rough difficulty levels within the game. Uh, we're today going to be hunting the Sawtooth, uh, which is sort of our starter level encounter. So, with that said, uh, our starting card here is the Hunt Begins, which if I flip it round, the sun rises in the east, first light forcing darkness from the skies above. It's time for the hunt to begin, and for you to write your name in the annals of the Hunter's Lodge forevermore. So that kind of gives us the setting, which pretty much makes you guys excited, I'm sure. Mm. And now, as the leader, uh, I'm going to be drawing three cards from here and choosing which one I want. Now, normally I'd keep these secret because I'm, I get the whole choice and these guys have to sort of pretty much follow my lead. Yep. I have the leader token, this one here. However, um, for the purposes of obviously demonstration, I'm gonna show all three what we have. So, these are the three that I draw. Now, we can immediately see that these are green level settings. As we go through, there are more difficult encounters we'll have. So we have yellow, and then we have red later on. And these represent us progressing through the wild, finding first easy encounters, and then going through. Now, as I've drawn these, I'll be choosing one of them to actually experience, for us to experience. So there's various different settings here. So if we just quickly look at them, this information here tells us which deck it belongs to, which is the Sawtooth one, as we've explained. Uh, this here tells us his level one encounter, which we know from the coloring. Uh, this tells us the trophy points we need to have in order to progress, um, actually complete the scenario successfully. Um, and obviously we have a one to two player level and a three to four player because there will be additional enemies and you have more players. Um, this tells us the enemies we will encounter, uh, so in this case we can see it's a grazer and some watchers, and here it tells us the orientation of the boards. Lastly, we have this, which is our bonus resources. Uh, now, each individual, um, each individual encounter has a, degree, has a level where, to complete it, we have to get as many trophy points as one of these two uh, in order to progress, and at that point we successfully complete it. If we kill every enemy, yeah. we get a bonus of these resources each. So that's what we're going to be trying for when we do these. Now you notice this one here doesn't have any bonus resources. That's because this is purposefully designed as an easier encounter. So on this one, um, it's very easy to complete the scenario. You'll see these numbers are very low, but there's no bonuses. So we really have to hedge our bets on where we think we're going to be as we progress through. Uh, the other deck here is the event deck. Now this is given to the character with the fledgling token, which is Jamie in this case. He's the youngest, so that's how it starts off. And these cards really are like a catch-up mechanic um, for the player in the last place. So they represent some of the interesting sort of wild events that could happen. We've got various different effects on here. Now Jamie's ideally going to be playing one which gives him a big bonus and sort of you know restricts what we're doing, or alternatively just gives him you know, his character a much better chance of succeeding in the next scenario. And with that said, uh, we're going to quick flick through. James can take this, I'm going to take these. And I am going to play, I think we'll be playing this one. So I play it face down and wait for Jamie. These two are discarded. Uh, we're take not going to encounter those. Okay, right, fantastic. Discovery. Perfect. We flip them over, so it looks like Jamie's played the scavenger card, uh, which means during the, this encounter coming up, he'll get a salvage card every single time one of us kills an enemy, which is pretty good. Mm. Uh, on our one, uh, we're going to be playing through this. So today we're going to be encountering some watchers and scrappers. Okay, all right, let's get going. Right. Okay, so we're all set up. Uh, we're following obviously what we see on this card here. So um, first thing is we can see based on these tiles here, these are our starting areas. So we all now get to choose where it is we want to go. Um, I am playing the Kaja and I am going to choose to start in this area here. Basically on any of these tiles here, you can start on any of the edge points around here or around here. You couldn't start here, for example, because it's tiling another, it's crossing over to another board. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to start here. Now that I'm actually starting in tall grass, which means I can become hidden as well. Just like the game, if I'm in tall grass, these enemies can't see me, which obviously gives me a real advantage for when I actually want to attack them or anything else, because they're going to follow their patrol routes around, and if, obviously if they come along next to me and I was out in the open, they'd find me and then be able to alert it and then attack me. Um, over to you guys to choose where your starting positions are. Is it me? Okay, yeah, I so I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here. Mm. So I'm also uh, hidden okay, if so I can have one of those token tokens. Thank Absolutely. You. And am I allowed to go in the same? Uh, you square? can go the same one. You can go here wherever uh, you prefer. I'm, I'm gonna go in the same one. I'm gonna buddy oh. up with him. Okay. Awesome. Buddy up. That's so lovely. You're both. I'm fledgling. Yeah. I'm learning. Yeah. Learning exactly. from the. <laughs> so just to explain <laughs> quickly on that, I have the leader <laughs> token because I'm the oldest. That's how it starts off. And Jamie has the fledgling token over there. Uh, unfortunately, guys, you don't have anything at the moment, but that will change as the game goes on. Um, You're the middle we'll child. <laughs> and as we go through, we'll talk about how the glory mechanic works in terms of how these will shift around and actually change the priority of you know our hunting party, that sort of stuff. 
So, uh, I'll just move this one out of the way. We don't need that anymore. So, just as a reminder, uh, we're looking to succeed in this scenario to get a minimum of five trophy points. Each of these enemies are worth different amounts. Um, if we kill all of the enemies, then we will get a certain uh, bonus, which in this case is two metal shards each. So. Ooh. Uh, one last oh. thing to say, uh, as I'm playing obviously through Placardia, all of us will start off with a starting resource, that's how we start the game. Now my one, I start off with Chill Water, uh, purely because the Karja is designed around having uh, bonuses on inflicting conditions um, upon the enemy, which kind of gives me a sort of real leg up to using some of my ammunition to start with. Um, for these guys who are not quite so specific, um, they both have metal shards, which really gives them something where they can use them uh, with the merchants later on to buy more equipment. So, and I can obviously do that well with my shield water if I want to save it. Um, it's really sort of, you know, works in a very... You have to feel how, you, how the scenario yeah. is going. Yeah. So, uh, we're all going to draw a five, star, five cards at the start of the scenario. Now again, obviously normally you keep these hidden. Uh, the game is semi-cooperative. We have to work together in order to succeed. If any of us uh, are basically forced to uh, withdraw on this encounter, we will, we will fail it. Um, however, at the same time, um, obviously one thing we want to do is be able to try and defeat and get the most glory and thus become the best of all the hunters. So ordinarily these cards are hidden. I'm just gonna put mine here so we can all see. Yep. But again, purposes of demonstration stuff. So. You have two actions you can make uh, during uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, basically, the first they are uh, you can craft, in which case you draw cards from your discard pile and put them back into your deck. You can make a melee attack, you can make a range attack, uh, you can distract by throwing a stone to another area, uh, and obviously, enemies would then move towards that area. Yes. Um, alternatively, uh, your sort of various other options we have you can sneak, so you can go. Sort of very quietly, don't necessarily make any noise, or you could sprint, in which case you can move two squares, but obviously you make noise as you go and you alert anything nearby. So, with that said, uh, I'm going first because I have this token here, and mm -hmm. I'm the Karja, I'm going to try and kill this Watcher. All of the enemies will start off on alerts, so they're all <coughs> going to carry on. And just a quick note on the patrol routes I should probably have at this point. These guys will move around each turn and slowly patrol around. If any enemy leaves, uh, the board, they are just gone. And obviously yep. that immediately impacts our need for us to kind of get the bonus resources at the end. So although we could effectively ignore this scrapper and let it sort of patrol off the edge of the board, there's a real um, incentive for us not to let that happen. Yeah. Uh, unless obviously we're looking for an easy ride through. And that really comes down to us, well, right. Right. So, yeah, it, so really, it really comes down to how we want to play this. So anyway, as said, I'll start off first. Now, a few choices. Um, I could move in with my Harvard and attack. Now, enemies that aren't alert don't get their armor bonus. The idea is the hunters have the ability to sort of, you know, really um, sort of pick their weak points they want to attack through. Um, I am probably, however, going to have a quick look through my cards. I'm going to silent strike, I think. So, I am going to make an attack with my halberd. That doesn't cost me any ammunition type um, ordinarily because I'm making a spear attack. However. Um, I am actually going to use an ammunition card on this one, which is the skill Silent Strike. Now, I can only use this on alert enemies if I have two or less cards in my hand. Uh, obviously, that's not alert, so that's no problem. And this gives me a bonus attack on my dice of one blue dice. Okay. So, as part of a melee attack, you get to move as you charge in. So, I'm going to charge in here. Obviously, I'll lose the hidden token. I'm not so hidden now. <laughs> I'll grab one of those. And my normal halberd attack for Karja gives me this and this. So, let's throw our dice and see what happens. Okay, so we can see that's a fairly straightforward roll. Uh, we've got one, two, three for a total of six damage. Uh, now ordinarily, we have a quick look at the Watcher's card. Uh, we can see that it has armor, which will reduce the number by one. Obviously, we're ignoring that anyway, uh, because it's not a alert, but crucially, it has five hit points. Oh, nice, you killed oh, it. So nice. you killed it straight away. So Watcher, as you can see, is pretty easy to kill. The whole focus point of that is obviously you really want to take out Watchers when you can because obviously the first thing they do will try to alert the other, the other machines, sure. which is very bad. Yes. So, um, now, I've killed an enemy, which means I immediately gain glory equal to its glory value, which is one. But the first thing, because I killed an enemy, I get to draw a salvage. And again, a Watcher is worth one. And because so, you killed an enemy, I get to draw a salvage. Well, you could let me wait to explain this. Oh, sorry. sorry. That's oh. all right. So I get Blaze for killing the Watcher. It goes it's... there. Maybe I should have been uh, paying attention. I also get a Blaze. There you go. So Jamie gets sure. a Blaze. Where's my um, things? Exactly. <laughs> so I get one glory point for doing that. Uh, and obviously this card goes into my discard pile. Okay, so that's my first action done. Uh, I can now move, uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to sneak into this area here with this grass and grab one of these. 
Okay, so that's me done. Sneaky. Now, at the end of every uh, action activation, uh, sorry, a hunter activation, we then have the step where enemies will then progress. Okay. So we follow enemies in a three to four player mode, or we'll follow this chit here, which basically tells us which enemies uh, activate, and that's based on their starting positions here. So the V ones, or the ones of this mark here, will now progress. So because none of them are alert, they won't have anything other than following their patrol routes. So this one will go to here, this one will go to here, and this one will go to here. We now flip that over, uh, which means the next activation, the scrappers will activate, mm. ah, and we move to Gaz. Okay. okay, right. Well, I think I am going to use my my hunter bow with my hunter arrow. Now, just quick reference I should probably tell you at this stage. Yes. If you attack an enemy and there's another enemy in an adjacent square, yep. you will make them alert because obviously you hit one enemy and it yes. immediately alerts all of the others. Of so how about throwing a stone to sort of distract this watcher away so it won't end up alerting that scrapper? That's a good idea. Yes. No, I will. I'll do that. I use one of my actions to throw a stone to okay. here. Okay. So this enemy, you choose one enemy of an earshot, which in this case we're yep. choosing this guy, and he will move back over to there. Okay. So then I'm going to use your first my... action done. That is my first action, and then my second action, I'm going to use my hunter arrow okay. to give me an extra dice. Okay. And so we're still going to ignore its thing, it's still its armour. Oh, okay, so well. that's two special results. Now each weapon uh, has a special result on it, if we have a look here, yep. which tells us in the case of the hunter bow, uh, wood by the Nora, it's actually worth three damage. You've done a mighty six damage to this thing, and killed it dead. Yes, I well have. Well done. Thank you. So, Thank you. Oh. you're going to, well, before you oh, do that, sorry, we always I'm draw a card from excited. the salvage deck. The first point is always when you draw cards from a salvage deck, some of them will have good effects in them, some of them will have bad effects as well as resources. You might get a trophy kill, for example, which gives you an increased amount of glory. You might have a ruined kill where it's so mangled that it's not worth any trophies okay. whatsoever. So. Oh. I have, ooh, a trophy kill. Wow, oh, nice. Uh, hands aloft to the skies, you present your bloody trophy to the sun. This hunter gains one glory point and then discards this card. Okay, so you're not only going to get the normal one for the watcher, ooh. you're going to get an extra one as well. Oh, but it's ooh. okay, because this guy here gets one ooh, too. Look, look, ooh, 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 I'm blinded. Ooh, <laughs> blinded, blinded. I get metal shards. Okay, cool, oh, so man. you're really doing well with the merchant at the end yeah. of this. Okay, so that's this enemy yeah. is now defeated. And I'll pop that into my uh, discard, discard pile. Uh, mm. Yeah, over the way. So, um, obviously you made an attack, so you're no longer there. We should probably talk a little bit about what the hunters actually do at this stage. It's probably a great idea. So the, what, the Nora Hunter is really about a very methodical, just like the game, it's a very resourceful, very methodical kind of character. So um, it's more about kind of sniping off bits of vulnerable points of enemies, um, creeping around doing that with your bow at range. Obviously, you do have the ability to hit up close, but yeah. and we'll get in later on. You get bonuses for destroying resources on uh, destroying different um, components on machines, that yeah. sort of stuff. Whereas the Kaja, by comparison, my character is much more flashy, kind of all about running in, doing some really devastating melee attacks, looking really yeah. cool, um, and doing that stuff. And the Banuka over here is all about pushing themselves to the limit. Yes. So uh, you're, you're really about, you've got an interesting mechanic in your deck where it's about scrapping cards from your hands, give you really powerful abilities, but making yourself a lot weaker to do so. Kind of, you know, it's all about sort of being very resourceful, living on the edge of things, yeah. which is pretty and cool. I think I'm going to try that. Okay, well, first of all, well, you've, still got, you've, you've done two actions, but yes. now enemies are going to move. So, just quickly grab these out of the way. Yeah. So, uh, we're on this one, as we said. So, now these guys are going to move. This one's mm. going to go to here. This one's going to go to here. And we're going to flip that over. If you watch us next. All right, so uh, I am going to sneak my character to here. Okay. So, and then I'm going to shoot the scrapper. Oh, cool. Um, now, I can shoot bits off him, correct? Uh, you can. So um, you guys who are Horizon veterans, this will be no surprise to you, but for those of you who aren't, um, some enemies, obviously we haven't seen in watches, they're quite small, kind of um, not much to really reduce off of those guys. But some enemies in Horizon, pretty much most of them up from the watcher in fact, have different components you can tear off. Now these abilities have different special rules attached to them. In the case of the scrapper, there's two. There's the radar array here, which enab essentially enables them to ignore tall grass when they're adjacent to it, which isn't necessarily relevant here, but it's worth extra glory if you do wipe it off. Yep. It's also an easier target to take off. The other one is the power cell on the back. Now, the scrapper has a very, very powerful laser attack that it can make, which is quite devastating against us. Um, by ripping off this power cell, you basically the, the scrapper won't be able to use that attack. It's probably definitely worth considering if you want to do that. Yeah. So, All right, okay. so I think I am going to use a hard point 
arrow. Yes, okay. hard point arrow. I, I love how sure he is of himself. I, I'm, I'm, I've, got, I've got a set of cards He's in my hand, plan. and I, I want to try and maximise sure. my okay. ability to do okay. something. Okay, so, so okay. hard that. point arrow. Now, when you make attacks with your uh, with a hunter in Horizon Zero Dawn, there's three, three different types of cards. The first one is ammunition, which we've yep. seen on the sides of the bow. Uh, the second one hmm. is an action, uh, sorry, an additional card. Now, that basically yep. is an extra thing that you can add on to that to give you a bonus effect, which sounds like you've got one in I've mind. Got one, I've got push to the limits. Okay. So discard any number of additional cards from your hand to gain an additional orange dice per extra card discarded. That sounds pretty good. So I'm going to discard a hunter arrow. Okay, so you're going to basically discard that, so, so discard that's that. effectively, well it's pretty discard part, yeah. so we know it's gone. So how many dice do you normally get on this? So I'd normally get uh, one blue dice from my hard point arrow, an orange dice from my Banuk striker bow, and, and then, then another orange, orange, because yeah. you've got that. Now, are you targeting the actual creature? Are you, uh, sorry, the main chassis? Or are you targeting a certain component? Uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to ignore armour, because it's not on I'm there. I'm going to go for the power cell. Okay. So I want to try and take away his ability to sweep Gun over us all. That makes sense. That sounds so, good. So uh, I'm looking for a total of four. Uh, you are a total of four. So oh, it's pretty one, good. Two and a special. What does your special do? Uh, draw one additional salvage card. Couldn't make it up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a metal shard. Okay. Well, he gets everything. He really mm. is. Okay, <laughs> so that's what we've done. Uh, yeah. So you've successfully done four, which means that we immediately take that. That's location yep. A. Yeah. Fantastic. It is, yes, yep. So we put one of these next to this scrapper. Now this means that we've torn that component off. Uh, component A is now destroyed. Can't be used. Uh, however, he is now alert because you've attacked him. We've nope. actually lost this. Could I play another card at this point, this card here? No, you couldn't play that card there, unfortunately, because that's, that's an additional one, yes. Ah, okay. Um, well, it's an worry. additional one. The other type yeah. is like a um, alert action, which I have here, actually, even this icon here, yep. which is like a use any time kind of ability. Okay, okay. That's so, so greedy, Jamie. Oh, I, want, I wanted a big <laughs> ten. Do I um, get a glory for shooting off the... Uh, you do, yes. Thank you very much. Keeping up. So you can already see that the, the game is, is a race to kind of get the most glory yeah. while we take out different enemies. Yeah. Um, and obviously at the end of the game, or at the end of each encounter, we'll be tracking up and awarding suns based upon that, which we'll yeah. talk about more when we get to there. Sure. Um, but the other thing we need to remember, keep in mind, is obviously at the end of the game, whoever has the most suns will be the overall winner. Obviously the whole group gets to succeed in the hunt, but only one of us can be the real alpha of, what, of the pack. Spoiler and that's the person alert, who's... it's me. There you go. <laughs> okay, so uh, watchers are going to activate. Uh, this guy will go here. This guy will go here. Now, um, this enemy has immediately gone close to an alerted enemy. Oh dear. And that becomes oh. alert. And oh this is kind of now speedy picking up pace a little bit perhaps for us. <laughs> so it's over to me. Uh, we just quickly flip that back over. So at the end of my turn, we're going to have scrapper activations, and those aren't generally so good. So first thing, I'm going to draw a card up to my maximum hand size, which is five. Okay, where does that leave me? Hmm, I can do some interesting things, I think. Okay, let's try doing that. I don't know if that's really going to work in a tremendous way, but... Huh, okay. Right, so I think I want to save that one to so use that attack. I'm going to use one of those. Um, if you could come and help me with this whole problem I've created well, I, for myself. I, 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 I see where you're coming from, but I also really would like to try and kill the enemy that I'm with. Yeah, that, I mean, makes, that's, that's, that makes sense. That I mean, that cool, does right? make yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to... Uh, I don't think I need to use hit and run. <laughs> Sorry, Jamie, I've got you back. Great. It's good that you guys are working together. <laughs> yeah, cards of superiority. So we're going to do that, we'll do one of those on that one, and then we'll follow up with one of those. And that seems pretty cool. Yeah, okay, so let's go with that. So, uh, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to check away this straight away. I'm going to make an attack with my sling against this enemy here. Now, sling normally gives me one of those. And to do that, I'm going to play one of these here, uh, which is a three bomb, which gives me another orange dice. Nice. Now, on this, you've got a special ability. I can discard chill water to inflict the freeze condition automatically. So I can either hope to roll one of the special results, yep. or I can just discard the chill water I started off with to get that bonus, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. So we'll put that in the discard pile here, uh, just out of the way. Um, and now, uh, I'm going to make this attack. Now, whatever happens, it's going to put this freeze condition on. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do, I should probably do that as well, is I'm going to play the... Not that one there. I'm going to play the... I don't think I need to actually. I can just do that. Yeah, cool. So <laughs> I'm going I'm I'm to do this. Uh, <laughs> wow. So that does too. This guy hasn't got his armor, so it's not too much. Um, that's going to hit it. It's going to apply this result here. Now, I didn't target any components with that. Probably should have done, but I yeah. didn't. So uh, that's going to do two damage to it. 
So I'm going to grab this, but I'm going for a kill. Oh, uh, so okay. We'll see whether that works out or not. Um, wow, and then he really realizes he should play this card here. Yeah, <laughs> play it then, play it. No, play no, it's it. okay. <laughs> there we go, that's why I wanted to play. So that's done that, so that's done two damage. Uh, it's now alert as well. We'll grab one of those. Uh, oh, discard this. However, I can now play this interrupt card here, follow up. So I play after I inflict a condition to move into the same space as my target and make a free melee attack. Oh, wow. wow. And if I kill this target, um, I gain two additional glory points. Oh, wow. So I'm going to move straight up into here. Now, um, the really interesting point is, is that I now need to try and kill this thing. Now, yeah. because it's got a condition on it, it's free, just like the Horizon Zero, the Horizon Zero Dawn video game, that means I ignore its armor on this attack. So nice. even though it's alert, I'll go straight through. And I'm also going to be attacking with my halberd. Now, it's a bit of an ask to try and do this one. I am mm. going to play the Blazing Strike card as well. Uh, which on this attack, which is if the target is suffering from a condition, I think to inflict an additional two damage and gain one glory. Oh, so if you kill it, you get four this glory. Is, this is a huge swing if I can pull wow. it off. But I also need to do, let's have a quick look, six, six damage with this, which is quite a lot. Even if I'm, I'm going to be doing two on top of this anyway, so yeah. I need to do a fairly hefty whack with this so thing. Four damage needed? Four damage, if I can do it. Oh! oh. Goodness. So, nice. um, that was a bit of an ask, but we won't talk about how, how lucky that was. <laughs> so, um, that's done enough, so that's four plus the two from it, which gives me eight, which I won't put the tokens on, I'll just take this off. Now, obviously, I've sacrificed a lot of glory there by doing that from ripping off components and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But it's quite I don't know, I think, I think your cards have shored you up there quite nicely. Well, yes and no, it's maybe quite weak. You remember, if your deck runs out, then it's game over, so I'm kind of desperately working my way through. But I did tell you, the card was all about super flashy. Cool oh yeah, it's right? true, and that was so flashing we'll that cool. off. So, uh, we'll take this one, and we'll take this one away. So, uh, let's quickly work out the glory tally, the yeah. tally, I should say. So, it's worth two glory, uh, oh. looking at that, but we'll draw cards first. So, scrapper is worth two cards. Unsurprisingly, it's a scrapper, it's what yep. it does. So I get to draw uh, luminous braining, which seems pretty cool, and a machine core, uh, oh, which is great. But you get one card as well, because well. you're a cheeky scavenger. Uh, metal shards. Wow. Okay, so let's work out the glory. So Where's I get my card? two from <laughs> the killing the scrapper, which is a harder target. Um, I get one additional one from blazing strike, and I get two additional ones from follow up. Oh my! <laughs> two, which is four, pretty cool. Six. Wow. Okay, so we'll just drop these cards into my deck here. I mean, I pretty much did have to burn through everything. I yeah. Had there, but, but that's been pretty cool. Um, and also that was a free attack, so I'm then going to sneak into... We better, we better step up our game, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm now there, and it looks like it's up to you guys. Mm. Okay. Uh, scrappers? Uh, the, the oh, sorry, yeah, Scrappers yeah. helps me uh, remember the rules. So this guy here, we've torn off his uh, radar array, which is pretty good. That wasn't radar, it was his uh, sorry, power, his, cell. His power, power cell. cell. So now we follow the Scrappers behaviour card, because it is alert. So having a quick look at this, we can see, uh, is a hunter within one? It's not. Uh, so no, we go down this route, we move one towards the closest hunter, which is going to be you, or sorry, the previous one to activate. Actually, it's towards me. Mm. Um, however, so I did help you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it then normally would make a laser attack, except because we see this component here. However, because you removed that very helpfully, yeah. it yeah. won't now try to hit me with that. You're welcome. Which is fantastic, thank you. <laughs> Flip this over. And so to you guys. Okay. So Remember, can, these guys are alert. Can I... Still hit him if I was to uh, go around could, here. You could go around this way, for example, and hit across, yeah. Okay. So you couldn't hit directly across that, but no. you could go one, two, sprint, and then attack. Okay, and that, that only takes one of my actions to sprint, it, uh, doesn't it? Yep, so then you've got another one to directly attack. Okay. Or you could try and kill the Watcher, uh, or you could be think it's more entertaining for it to attack Jane it, over It here. certainly is. So, <laughs> I am going to uh, sprint to here. Okay, fantastic. And then I am going to... Hand, to oh, of so. course. I'm just getting too excited. Um, and then I am going to... Sorry, sorry, I was just checking what this what this yeah, one cool. does. So it's worth pointing out my one. Mm. Uh, it seems like I did an amazing amount of damage there, but I had to sacrifice three cards out of my hand, plus one of my starting resources. Yes. Yeah. So okay, so I am going to... And I'm very to... glad you ripped that off there, because otherwise I probably would have had a world of pain. <laughs> 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 Kaja is pretty good, but also pretty fragile. Yeah. So it's for a glass cannon. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, my Hunter Arrow. Okay. I'm going to discard my Salvage to oh, okay. play Inventiveness, so I gain an extra die. So this guy's going to try and do the oh. ultra damage as well. Uh, and... So, uh, Hunter Arrow's going to give him one, yep, remember, and you're going to get one extra one because of the Inventiveness. That. And I'm getting another one because it's... Uh, 
Yes, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about Nora. So yeah. yeah, so the Nora has an ability called Weak Point, uh, which is built into their card. Uh, remember, I said that they get bonuses for attacking a target. It's a very methodical kind of hunter. Gets bonuses for attacking um, per, uh, enemies that have had parts ripped off. And the idea is you sort of really found the weak point and you attack through it. Which means if a target's had a component destroyed, you get an additional one of those. So you've got one of those there. Yep. Uh, you get one. Oh, sorry, one of those and one yep. of those. Now, inventiveness actually gives you an extra blue dice, blue dice. Uh, into that, and your and hunter bow natively has wow. one of those. That's a lot of dice. <laughs> it yeah. is a lot of dice, isn't it? And. So that's his additional and his original ammo. If you've got an exclamation as well, we could throw that in. I think, I think I may do it. So I'm going to play sliding shot. Oh, sorry, remember you've only got one of them. Oh, can I, can't, so. I won't play that one then. Well, there you go. Still okay. prepared. Now this one is alert, so you are going to have to subtract one from this total. Are you attacking one. the component or are you going to attack the main chassis? I am going to attack the main. Remember, if the you attack main. the component. You'll, you tear that off, but any excess damage will be lost because you've literally just completely destroyed that part. I'll go for the main body. Okay, let's do it. Oh. Uh, so I'll take this well, one away. Um, so. Did you have to take one away? Oh, for the armor. For the, for the armor. Yes. Uh, so this is, so a, uh, this is a special result, which is effectively worth three. So I'll drop that down there for the simple reference. Okay. Uh, so that's six in total. Yes. Uh, seems pretty powerful. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, fortunately for the scrapper, it's got eight health, so it's not quite dead, although it's probably limping quite a lot by now, yeah. I imagine. I'd <laughs> certainly <laughs> hope so. It's a pretty juicy target. Yeah, yeah it's, it's for this guy, yeah. yeah. Um, Sweep in. Still for glory. Literally. Just like every day. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have any um, additional tokens, any cards, exclamations, or anything you want to play interrupts? No, okay. no, I don't have anything else. So. Okay, so these will go to your discard pile. Uh, now it's enemy reactions, and obviously these guys here uh, will activate. Now, um, <coughs> looking at this, they're going to go for the closest hunter who's last previous one to activate. Yep. So that's you. Uh, so you're obviously over here. Uh, now the closest though is Jamie, so this yep. will go to here. Uh, sorry, I should follow the patrol route first. So uh, are there non-alert enemy uh, machines within two? Yes, there is. So this hunter, this will instead go one to here and will alert this guy here instead. That's what watchers do. Now that means everything's wild, <laughs> not quite so good. Oh dear, um, we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> on the plus side, this guy now activates and moves. Um, he's going to move towards the closest hunter to us to activate. So one, two, three, four. Sorry, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yep, so everyone's equal distance. So this one will patrol into here as well. Okay, flip this over. All right. So, so over to you, me. Jamie. So draw up to my starting hand size of five. Yep. Nope. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. So you a couple of choices. You could go after some of those, uh, some well, those watchers for the easier target. Bearing in mind, this will probably attack me yeah. uh, next up. So you probably don't have to well, worry too much about that. I'm, uh, I think I might go try and kill everything. Wow. wow. Not everything. Feels obviously. bold. In bold. one go. In okay. one go. So I think you probably put your cards out in front of you. If you yeah, yeah. So uh, not everything. I'm, I'm going to try and kill this scrapper that's damaged and then try and take out one of the watchers as well. Okay, this seems good. So, see, firstly, see. I'm going to sprint up to here. Okay. Now, normally that would make everything aware, would make a noise. Everything's They're already aware. Anyways, it it's it's that much. moment in the game where you're just running around desperately now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much the, the battle is joined. Yeah. So, I'm going <laughs> to use my uh, hard point arrow. Okay. With my Banuk striker bow. Okay. And I'm going to uh, use Driven. Okay. So, discard two cards from the bottom of my discard pile to take an additional action after this one. Okay. So, so these are going to go, these are a bit of, effectively getting burnt. Yep. Yeah, so, they're basically, so the Banuk has a scrap mechanic, which basically means that um, those cards are now gone from the deck. You can't even craft those back at this stage, no. which is bad. So, okay. So, uh, that gives you these dice here. Yes. Remember to attract in one because it's armor. In one, so I need to get a three or more. Yeah. Was it a melee attack? Oh, sorry, it's no, no, it's a striker bow. Okay. No um, and then nothing else to add into this. Okay. Not just yet, anyway. Oh, Looks good. Oh, no. So that's killed this guy. Yep. So we're going to take these away. So first up, uh, obviously we're going to draw a card from this, and unfortunately he doesn't yep. get to draw another one because no, he killed an enemy. Uh, it is a spark. Okay. So that means that you're going to get just standard two glory. Only and then. Standard. I'm going to use my Banuk Survivor ability, Pride Ooh. of the Wirak, to discard two more cards from the bottom <laughs> yeah. of my uh, discard pile, so they're getting taken out of my deck entirely, but it gets me an additional glory point. 
So as we talked about, the obviously every ability, every character has a certain ability to go with them as to what they do. Yeah. Uh, so your one we've already seen where yes. you get extra bonuses to attack. Yep. Uh, Jamie's one, you obviously get extra glory, but you are really burning through your deck at this point. Uh, now. Uh, uh, we, we, we don't start rates. from any cards in this deck, <laughs> no, so no. You're, you're really going through it quite quickly. Um, so and my one, obviously, is to do with evade rolls and so on. So I've got my additional action. Yep. Um, but before that, I'm going to use Leave It for the Shamans. Okay. Um, so I play it and discard any number of cards from your hand and draw up to your hand size okay. from the Hunter deck. So I'm going to discard Experience in Hardship. Okay. And then I draw up to my full hand size. You do. So another one, two, three. Jamie, I had to break it to you, but your deck oh. is getting awfully low. Uh, yes, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, and then, so one important thing to say is your uh, your card that you grab, uh, sorry, you scrapped anything. Doesn't yeah. mean that you could ignore the once per turn attack restrictions. Yeah. So you could make another attack with your strike above if you wanted which, to. Which is what I would like to do. Okay. Um, cool. I don't have any hard point arrows, sadly. So I'm going to use a hunter arrow. Okay. And I'm going to shoot at one of those uh, little chappies there, the watchers. Okay. <laughs> so again, an orange dice and an orange dice. Okay. Now these guys, uh, they have four hit points. Uh, sorry, five hit points, and they have an armor of one. So these are all six. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, you can't do it on those dice. Mm -hmm. But it's going to look pretty cool. Okay, Two. so That's you've done cool. one damage. Uh, which one were you good. shooting at? Uh, this chap here. Okay, that guy there takes some damage. So, um, just a quick note on this. Um, obviously, that now means we've escalated the encounter because the scrapper mm. is dead. That does mean that every single turn, these guys will now activate because yeah. it's much faster. Uh, so, with that said, uh, that's your extra actions done. Sadly, um, <laughs> didn't you've got not much help. Uh, here's the good news, Jamie. Uh, now they're going to react. So let's have a quick look. Uh, are there non alert enemies within two? Nope, everyone's gone. So they're going to move one uh, in. So this one's going to go into here. We'll do yep. that, the one you just hit. And it's going to attack you for three damage. Okay. So, you get to make an evade roll uh, mm -hmm. on this. Um, that is my your Ice Hunter stack. has one of those. Yep. Now, you can choose to discard a card from your hand if you want to to get an additional one of these amber dice, but obviously that's weakening you. This is effectively your stamina. Do you oh, I'll, see how this, I'll see how this one goes. Okay, no worries. Okay, so you have two. And that attack was doing three, so you have to discard one card. So you can discard mm -hmm. from your hand, or you can discard from your deck, which is gone. Uh, I'm going to get rid of one of these Hunter arrows. Okay, no worries. Now, because you've had an attack, you roll out of the way, just yep. like Horizon. So you can choose to roll to any adjacent square. I think uh, this is probably important. I'll come back away. So you've got it here. So this guy now will try to move towards the closest act, last act of hun Hunter to activate, which means it comes to this one here. Mm -hmm. It's patrolling around. Okie doke. Okay. Let's show it over to you. Over to yeah, me. I think it's you. Uh, well, I need to draw some cards, and much like Jamie, my deck is not quite as bad, but still could be better. Bad. I'm okay. It's perfect. You've I've done got... a lot of glory, to be fair. Um, okay, oh. so let's have a quick look. I can freeze bomb, which isn't bad. Uh, I'm not sure I'll be able to do some crazy stuff here. I can do those two. Hopefully that moves me in to do some interesting stuff. And I now realise I've been a silly Billy. And I should have, I should have targeted a component and then I would have been swimming in swimming glory. glory. Oh, I see. Oh, silly me. Oh, Beginner's silly mistakes. Garrett. This is the whole point. It's, it's, an, early, it's an early scenario, it. so it's that's purposely it. designed to be a bit more easy, a bit more user-friendly. Obviously, yeah. they ramp up in difficulty as we go. That's it. Um, don't worry. Me. Yeah, exactly. So this is a nice <laughs> learner one for us. Training wheels. Yes. So I'm going to attack with my card of sling with a freeze bomb. I'm going to attack the one that's already taken damage from what James' attack was. Yep. Uh, and I'm also playing a hit and run as well as, as part of that, which means after I've attacked, I get to make a free run action. Oh, nice. So uh, I'm going to hit this guy here. I'll lose this hidden token. So uh, that's one of those and one of those. So card of sling isn't really doing much damage. It's all about putting conditions <laughs> onto things. Yep. Um, I can't, unfortunately, get the automatic freeze on this one this time, so I'm going to have to try and roll it. I'm going to smash over some models first. <laughs> I wish I rolled that a minute ago. Uh, get it well, anyway. There you go, you got I'm it. I'm on fire, so that's going to conflict the freeze really condition not, for my next attack. Ice cold. And that will now drop down to one of those. <laughs> now, because I get to make my sprint, I'm going to go one and two to here. So we'll just drop these like that. Um, and then I get to make an attack. Yep. Uh, so... I'm going to use my halberd, because it doesn't ignore the once per turn condition. I couldn't use the sling again if I wanted to. Uh, do I have any cards which are interesting? No, I don't think I need to worry about glory so much at this point. Because I've just... Yeah, it's all well, right for some, isn't it? Yeah, yeah maybe. 
Uh, I'm going to try this one here, Anatomical Precision. So if this attack inflicts one or more damage, I can reduce the damage inflicted by one and draw a card from the salvage deck. Mm -hmm. And if I roll a uh, special result, then I actually get to choose one resource instead, so I can actually try and get that chill water back. I'm going to ignore armor on this. Okay. Oh, wow. That's good. Wow. So, um, I've, I've killed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, sadly, that wasn't really what I was going for, but there we are. But you'll take it anyway. Yeah, right? I'll take it anyway, right? <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, I can choose to reduce that, and it'll still do it. So, I'll draw a card from the deck, and I actually get to choose because I roll one of those. So, I will take a chill water because we know that that's good for my guy. Mm -hmm. I'll throw some cards around, shuffle this deck. So, could you, does it have to be a resource for that, or could you fish for a trophy kill? Uh, no, it has to be specifically a resource. Okay. Gain a resource type. Yeah. Um, I like your style, but yeah. unfortunately not. Okay. Uh, and then I'll draw one for the kill, um, which enough chill water apparently. <laughs> and I'll draw one. Yep. Uh, trophy kill. Hands aloft wow. to the sky, you present the bloody trophy to the sun. This hunter gains one glory and then discards this card. Wow. Jamie's just stealing my glory. <laughs> I do get one for the uh, kill. Okay. Like every day, Jamie Giblin steals my glory. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and this guy's dead. Over to you guys. Okay, so I'll draw back up to okay. five. Oh, sorry, no, reactions. Oh. So this guy's going to now hit me. Uh, I don't <coughs> want to discard any cards from my hand, I don't think. I'm just going to roll, much like Jamie, and see what happens. So again, we follow our tree. Uh, it will try to attack me because there's no non enemies. So yep. uh, that's not so good. So I'm going to discard two cards. I'm going to discard these two from my hand. And I get to evade away. Uh, and I'm going to evade away to here, I think. <coughs> that's probably what that is. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you draw up to your head. Now I'm going to draw back up. Okay. So how are you doing, Jamie, for health? Uh, I've got five. Or four, sorry. Uh, four. I have not many. I've, I've got a lot of health. Yeah. I've got a lot of health. That's well, unfortunate. Health... You've got the two flashy hunters kind of doing <laughs> a lot of work in terms of using a lot their of stamina health up. And very little glory. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll <laughs> see, won't we? <laughs> okay. So I am going to. Play uh, hunter, hunter arrow. Okay. So I'll be able to shoot him from there. Okay. And then I'm also going to play a sliding shot. Okay. So, what does that do, sir? so we can be we can be flashy too. Okay. So any any dice from this attack can be re-rolled once, and if this attack kills the enemy, gain one additional glory point. Okay. Nice. Seems good. So let's let's see what I can do here. Okay. Did you want to discard any more um, resources to get extra dice? Oh, you didn't have the card, maybe. Ooh, do you have? I don't. Oh, that was the inventiveness, wasn't it? Yeah, so, no, okay. I, I don't. I don't have anything like that. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what happens. Uh, oh, ooh, that's so not going to get any better. That's not going to get, it. but you can. Uh, that is actually the best you're going to roll. Yeah. Mm. So that looks like you've done five damage. Uh, you're going to reduce it by one for its armor, though. Yep. Sadly, not quite enough. That is unfortunate. That is very fortunate. That is, that is so fortunate, right now. <sighs> that is so unfortunate. I do all the hard work. <laughs> And then Jamie swoops in, like every day <laughs> of my life. Okay. <laughs> well, um, we've learned like, things today. Meanwhile, <laughs> uh, you've still got another action to make. Remember. Um, so unfortunately, you're I am going to, do a melee. to sprint to here. Uh, that means it attacks you. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Oh really? Ooh. Yeah. You're taking oh. a hit for the team. Okay. I might. I might as well. Oh, I've, oh. I've got so much health, everybody else doesn't. Oh, that's okay. very, very well, kind that's of fair. You. Okay. That's okay. Well, so the enemy's going to move. I'm going to be the bigger man. So <laughs> the, the enemy here, uh, not all the enemies have been two, no. So it's going to move towards the nearest enemy, or the most recent hunter to activate, which is you. Yes. And it's going to attack you for three. Okay, look. So your Nora armor again means that you roll one of those. Do you want to discard a card from your hand to get an extra dice, or are you pretty good? I will, actually. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of uh, okay. Precision Strike, because I can't use it anyway. Okay. And you've ignored all three. You still get to fine. make your evade roll. So you're going to move 20 so adjacent. Spot. I will just go to here. Okay, Jamie, draw up. So, right, so draw up to five. We've all two cards left in your deck. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Oh, dear. Yeah. That's why I decided to... That was good of you. Very, very in. teamwork. It's okay. All right, so um, I, I'm going to start off with Leave It for the Shamans. Okay. Because I want to see what these last two cards are. I think I'll kill it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to drop my two hunter arrows yep. to draw up. Oh, yeah. Well, you draw one arrow. Yeah, you can just draw one. Yeah. It's not yeah. discard stat, yeah. so. And. Or, literally, if he can't kill this thing and then 
This could be bad. Yeah, yeah. it could be for could him. Be, could be, but it'd be alright. He fine. feels bold. He feels strong. Be fine. <laughs> alright, so uh, first action, I'm going to shoot it with a hunter arrow. Okay. And I'm going to use, because I've drawn it, push to the limits. Uh, yep, which means? I'm going to discard um, experienced in hardship. Okay. To gain an additional orange dice. Okay. Nice. So that's going to give you uh, three of these. So two orange dice, three orange dice. Yeah. Okay. Give him a shot. Uh, oh. That looks like he's killed it. Also, this gets to draw another resource. Gets to draw card. a salvage card. Yeah. Uh, ancient chimes. This may be discarded to pay any one resource type when buying an item from the merchant deck. Nice. So got a, free, a freebie nice. purchase. He is. Okay, uh, so that's that. You've and killed the enemy. Uh, you get to draw a card because you've yep. killed the resource. Uh, a blaze. <laughs> okay. Uh, which is really one of these. Pride of the Wirak. Yep. Discard these two to get that as a, another glory kill. So two more glory and two. Two more. Oof. I think he's just picked me at the post. I don't know. I think he has. Six, oh, God. So you've got eight. I have seven. <gasps> I've okay, got, I've got um, a very modest two. Yeah, Thanks, we'll, we'll get to that. That's that. a catch-up mechanic. <laughs> so uh, that's obviously our last enemy done. We've succeeded the encounter. Congratulations, guys. Uh, mm. So the first thing that will happen is I'll quickly cycle through this deck uh, because we're all going to be getting some machine parts. Ooh. That's bonuses, uh, not machine core. Anyway, uh, save for move while I cycle through this to find our different resources. Um, so we'll obviously all be getting two metal shards as a result of this, uh, which I'll allocate out to you guys. Oh, thank you. Um, and that's the encounter over. Fantastic. Um, so next step, we would move into the end phase, which is when we're going to go visit the merchant. Uh, very good for you with all your resources. The cards. scavenger card just yeah, really, really, really ramped helped up. you there, didn't it? Yeah. Um, we're going to be looking at that. Uh, we'll also be looking at levelling up a little bit, so our hunters will get better okay. uh, in order to prepare us for the more difficult challenges ahead. Cool. Okay. Okay, so it's now the end game phase. Uh, we obviously compl successfully completed our, our encounter, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. Uh, but first up, what we're gonna do is tally the glory. Uh, okay. That's the first step we do. So Jamie, you already know, has eight. Uh, I have seven, and Gaz, unfortunately, you've only got the two. A modest two. A modest two. So what we'll do is we now, now we've succeeded, we give out a blazing sun token to the person who has the most, which is you, Jamie. Uh, I will get a full sun, <laughs> and you will get the half sun. Hunter's Lodge, don't blame me. Yeah. So we're now going to take away our, we discard all of our glory. This is a catch up mechanic. So the idea is, is that we don't keep this going. So in the next scenario, uh, or in the next encounter, Gaz will have a real chance to step up, real effectively reset. Yeah. The other thing is, I'm going to take this horrible scavenger card away from you. Oh, thank yeah, God. Kept um, me and so also this as healthy. well, because now Gaz, you are the fledgling. You are the person in last place. So you're going to get to choose another event card mm. to give you a bonus next yes. time around. And obviously, Jamie, you are now the leader. Oh, no. <laughs> You've become the new leader, so you're going to be choosing our path going forward. Now, the next step we get to do before we go to the merchant, because that's going to be a real bonus in a minute, you'll get to pick first, okay. is uh, we choose our upgrade trees. Now, each hunter has their own upgrade tree, which gives them certain abilities which trailer towards what they are. Furthermore, um, so furthermore, you actually get to specialise which route you go down as well. So, for example, if I want to get down to leader strike down here, I'm going to have to start here and work my way through this way yep. as a tree goes. I, if I started off here, then I can't, even if I choose the next two paths, I can't quite get to that far along. So it's a, you have to think very sensibly and organically about how you want to go uh, looking forward. And generally, they'll represent certain different paths. For example, if we go down this way, shadow, start from Shadow, Cunning, and then Leader Strike, I'm building my Kaja into a uh, character who's really about sneaking around and sort of doing death uh, sort of kills that way. If I go this way, Shard Collector, Junker, and Artisan, then I'm really going more towards resource salvaging, that yep. sort of stuff and we kind of sort of focus our way around there and obviously there's middle grounds and different routes we can go um, so again you're first you're now the leader yeah. so you get to choose so I, I ultimately I'm going to try and shoot for fated by the blue light okay. so I'm, I'm going to add two provocations please. okay so provocation would be those two now those actually go into your deck um, they get shuffled into your deck which means that you've got more health effectively oh, that's good. Um, which means as we go forward we'll do that now the other step is once we've all upgraded on this path if we want to go to the next one we're going to have to choose a more difficult encounter mm -hmm. level one encounters as you can see here from this has a one next to it will only get us as far as this if we do more level one encounters we won't progress any further because we're not getting enough experience from these battles we have to keep pushing ourselves in order to level up and obviously whilst we just had a bit of fun killing some watches and some scrappers which are not the most difficult targets to kill mm -hmm. by the time you get to that sort of at the end that thing's a lot harder and we'll do an awful yeah. lot more damage when it hits you yeah so we really need to think about leveling up 
Um, so, uh, our next round to me as we go in yep. the same order. Uh, and I am going to go with the strike from the shadow because I quite like the idea of going down this way. I'm not sure I'm going to necessarily go for a leader strike as much as one of these, but it keeps my options open at this point to go to yep. adapt or whatever else. So, two strike from the shadow, go into my deck. And I'll uh, shuffle this all together now. I think and I'm going to go uh, to Ancient Grudge because I want to get to uh, double shot eventually. Cool. So. Oh, yeah, a double shot, which means yeah. you can put extra ammunition in. Yeah. Uh, we all know that one from the game, which was uh, pretty cool. Thank you very much. So there you go. Okay, and also these are all skills that go into your deck. Um, so these give you ability to do different stuff. Uh, just to give you a quick example, um, Strike from the Shadow, if I have a quick look, um, basically it lets me push enemies around and I can make a dodge. So it gives me real oh, nice. sort of board yeah. control so I can push an enemy one way and then jump back the other way. Yeah. Um, I know Ancient Grudge lets you discard glory in order to get extra dice, that sort yes, of stuff. So it. two glory points for two blue You've dice. got it, which is yeah. really powerful. So yeah. later on in the game, that's going to be a real bonus to be able yeah. to finish things off, which is a lot about how the Nora works. Yeah. Um, and then uh, your provocation, provocation allows me to scrap one card from my discard pile to choose an enemy behaviour this turn, so I can make an enemy do something. Yeah, so you go more of a shamanistic kind of route where you're yeah. kind of forcing the behaviour of stuff. So another board control, but again, back to the Banuke, you're salvaging, yeah. you know, you're scrapping stuff scrapping as you go along, so you're really kind of weaker. Okay, so the last step of the end phase, we go to the merchant. Now Jamie's going to be going first here because he's the leader also, because he has the most resources, but that's, yeah. my, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not the main thing. So here's the point where we go to a merchant. Now these are tiered decks, so a merchant level one, for example, uh, we have sort of relatively low key kind of things. Obviously we can see a Nora Protector Light, for example. Now as we go up through more difficult merchants, and again, you access those by doing more difficult encounters, you'll find like a much better Nora Protector suit and that sort of stuff. So it kind of keeps us there tiered to where we need to be. Yeah. So to start with, I'm going to buy that health potion because that lets me draw from my discard pile, which I want to be doing frequently. Cool. So that is, fits perfectly. Okay. So it costs you one metal shell to do this. Yep. And okay. There we Fantastic. Are. We just earned a whole bunch, so there you go. <laughs> right. So we draw that. Now goes to the discard pile here. We draw one extra card from the merchant deck, and now it comes around to me. We all take it in turns. Yep. So, uh, looking at my deck here, I really want that. Hold a satchel, but I don't have the right resources. I want to hang on to my chill water because they're really good during the actual scenario. But I do want that more. Ah, oh, of course. I can only wear Kaja outfits because I'm a Kaja. Because I'm a Kaja. Yeah. What Kaja would be seen dead in? You know, something from a backwards no, savage like a Nora. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the kind of mentality these guys have. <laughs> so I am yeah, going these to. Guys. Yeah, exactly. They're. Um, I'm going to go for. I can't use a hard point arrow. Ah, that's awkward. Okay, I'm going to go for the resist melee weave. I am going to spill one of my chill waters. Um, so I'm going to discard that, and I'll get a resist melee weave, which gives me a bonus if I'm attacked by an enemy. Okay. Draw one of those. Ah, oh, there it is. is. There it is. There it is. And now we go over to you. Well, okay, so I am going to, I, I really wanted the Nora Protector Light, but I don't have a chill water. So hard point arrow I'm just going to go for the hard point damage. arrow. Yeah. Okay, so let's so drop it into the discards. And one of those. Thank now, you. when you buy ammunition uh, from here, uh, that will actually replace one of the cards in your deck. So the idea is you're upgrading your deck sure. by doing it. Yeah. So you're going to go through now, choose one card to discard, and then cycle that in. So it's not quite the same oh. way as the skills. So for your, exactly what you've done there, it's a great idea so to take out one of the hunter arrows, arrows for example, yeah. and you've upgraded it effectively to have a hard point arrow yeah. to make it a little bit better. Obviously equipment, as we've seen, will go down in different places, and weaves sort of sit off to one side with the resources. Yeah. Okay, and we go back around to Jamie. And cool. this is how this will progress as we go through. Now obviously the, the challenge to us here is how much we want to spend on getting different equipment upgrades yep. and that sort of stuff, uh, versus how much we want to uh, have resources for activating abilities, like I showed with the Kaja for example. Mm. Um, Gaz, I know you're able to discard bits of resources from yes. your hand as well to do stuff, yeah. and so on. Uh, and also how much of it you want to deny other people. Jamie, yeah. I know for example, could easily grab the Hoarder Satchel to increase his hand size, which yeah. immediately makes you much better, but it also stops us from having that same yeah. advantage. Which is what I I would have definitely done with my exactly. little chimes. <laughs> exactly, and this would go around until exactly, and yeah. this would go around until eventually we sat there and we finished. Yeah, uh, in all of us say, "Well, I'm done buying stuff." Mm. Um, and at that point, we then deck goes back, goes back into here, and then we progress on exactly as we've shown before, back to encounters. Okay, and that's us obviously playing through. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, stick them in the comments below, and we'll have sure to answer.